Okay, this is all the stuff we're going to use to put the co-driver seat in. We have the side mounts, we have the pro sport over here, and what I'm going to use is the main support across the chassis that's going to take the brunt of everything is going to be these. These are the door bars from the Passat. I made an X-brace when I put the 914 on the rotisserie. All I'll do is cut the tacks off, clean it. What it is, is they have a really nice flat place right here so the, so the mount can be, um, you know, really right next to it and you can get the entire surface area welded into it. It's well long enough and it is. I, I can't, did I say it was tough? Because damn, it's tough. <laughs> this is probably some of the toughest metal I've ever come across uh, as a, you know, a stock vehicle. Uh, now, what we're going to use, these are the plates that I, I cut up for the driver's seat. What I'm going to do is I'm going to reuse these because they actually go flat on here. And, you know, yeah, they're pretty thin, but the whole thing is this is just to make it um, so it bolts on, I can weld it. Then, in between, I am going to use a stiffening brace that goes underneath like that and weld it to the side. But i got to first weld in the capture nuts. The capture nuts are going to be these. You know, more of the uh, M M8 uh, bumper mounts. So, and I really like using them, so that's pretty much it. We're gonna have that all squared away, and actually when everything is all, all said and done, all put together, it should be really stout. I mean, there should not go anywhere. That's the thing, and, but I have to weld it fully before I put it in. I'm gonna, I, may, I might just have L brackets in there just to rest it in there see what happened, you know, see exactly where it is, because you have to have dispersion plates on the side of the chassis, um, you know, like on the floor pan, because it's, you have to remember, welding this small section to the, to the actual floor pan without a dispersion plate, you're just asking for trouble, because what happens is all the force is, is right around a very, very small area, and plus you'll heat it up and kind of crystallize it with the weld, but uh, the main thing is, is that if you put a big plate right there, you have all this welded surface area, and when if you take a hit, what happens is it disperses the energy throughout the entire thing, not in a small concentrated point. At least that's uh, what it was always told to me. <laughs> so, all right, let me um, start cutting, trimming up all this stuff, getting everything all set with the bolts and putting it on here and then figuring out. I might just tack one or two small pieces just to see, say, okay, this is, this is how it's going to go in, then measure it and go in, and then, you know, file the fit. All right, let me... Um, uh, yeah, let me just plug the air holes in and let's do it. Here are the plates. Here's the seat frame underneath it. What it is, the seat frame has four holes. One, two, three, four on all four corners. What I did was did one and four holes all the way around. Just means I had to drill four holes. That's it. With these things cleaned up, these are the facade door bars. This is how they're going to sit. So what happens is you get the most amount of uh, retention because you're in between two bolt holes. This will all be welded together and there will be a plates welded right onto here. Now, what I have to do from what I have to do now is cut up all the material for the dispersion plates that we're going to be welding onto the chassis, then welding um, these bars onto those dispersion plates. Let me show you what I got. This is what we're going to use for the uh, dispersion plates. What is it? The base of the drafting table, of course. Um, the metal is thick. It's 14 gauge. It's one step below eighth inch plate. This is the reason why I'm going to use it. It's more, it's, it's probably twice as thick as the sheet metal that's inside there. And if we put a big enough dispersion plate, I think it'll handle any, any type of accident, whatever you're going to do, whatever you're going to throw at it, unless it's, you're hitting a Finkelstein, like, um, what was, uh, uh, Petta Solberg in the old, uh, back in the two thousands when you were at rally Germany, but look it up. It's pretty nasty. The cage broke. It was crazy. But other than that, Let's get, move on to this. Let's recycle some more stuff. Let me get my cutter wherever I left it, and I'll cut this up for the dispersion plates. We'll throw it in the car.
Well, I think the seat is at its correct height. As you saw, I put the boards down there. What I have to do is I'm gonna have to cut the tops of the rails like I did over there on the original mounts because this thing is sitting underneath those rails. With the boards on there, it's gonna act like that bar that goes across. What it is, it is that I'm not really sure how far I can go back because I can't really tell with a roll cage. I can go back a little bit, as in leaning back a little bit. I might have to move the seat forward just a tad, but once I cut those out, then I can figure out where it is. I only have to use probably two of the dispersion plates because the other ones are gonna be right on the original rails that are already in there, and that's more than adequate. Also, you're probably wondering why, how I'm setting up the uh, seat. Well, I'm setting up the seat so if I had a root book and I get lost, I take two pages, I go ahead. I look at landmarks, big red barn on right, caution. And I look up, look up and see the big red barn and say, okay, big red barn on right, I know exactly where it is, I can reestablish re where I am. If the computer's off, remember, your belts are tied you in, you don't wanna go anywhere. I have the seat set so I can stretch out and I can just barely hitch the computer because the computer is attached to the panel in the original in the in the photos it's out about three inches so if i can go like this three inches i can go like that and it'll easily be used i can easily adjust the calibration for the computer to make sure it's cal it's caught up all right now that is my reasoning behind having you know to where the seat placement's going to be all right now i gotta get out of here it's not pretty <laughs> Hopefully I won't fall flat on my face and I am gonna cut right now so you don't see me falling flat on my face. It probably make good YouTube, but that's what the this, uh, fails aren't about what's what's going on right now in this video. All right. <laughs> see you in a second. <laughs> All right, the seat base uh, mounts are right now uh, tacked to the side rails. The rails are not tacked to the chassis. I wanna keep it just in case I'm gonna have to move it just a little bit here and there. The next thing I wanna do before I tack that in, or before I pull this out, re-weld everything, make sure everything's okay, I want to do the co-driver's footrest. And then, let me show you what I got. I'll bring you over to the bench. We'll uh, take a look at that, you know, the modifications I'm gonna do to it to make it work. And uh, then I think the harness bar has to go in next and then start welding, pretty much. But uh, the harness bar will be important. And how can I put this? If the brakes don't show up, guess what? We're in the episode. <laughs> Probably saying, thank God. <laughs> All right, let's go into the bench. This is what we have for a co-driver's footrest. What is it? This is a Sparco footrest from like demon tweaks back in the 90s. I don't even know if they, they probably still sell them. Don't know. I haven't, I've been so far out of it, it's a long, for a long time that I really don't know. But what this is, is I got it out of a car, an old rally car, and they had two footrests. This was underneath another footrest that they had in the car. <laughs> I'm sitting there going, huh? why'd they do that? Well, I know why they did that. Because I pulled that other footrest out and I tried to pull this one out and says, how do you get it out? Because what they did was, there, here are some hinges, and what do they use? They use pop rivets into the bottom floor pan. And then, right here, they had a piece of metal across there to use more pop rivets, and it's also affixed with three bolts per side, looks like, you know, probably M4s, 
with an eight millimeter nut on there and like uh, that looks like a four millimeter allen key on the front what a pain to get off oh my god so what i did was i just you know zipped off all the um um uh, uh, pop rivets and pulled it out and i just used their old rest and i set it in there correctly so but that's beside the point this is actually a really really good designed footrest fantastically designed and you want to know why it's because of these hinges what it is you can have them in there like that the profile is, footrest is like that in the footwell these brackets come down if you have an, a bolt in either side you can access through the holes you can zip those bolts out fold it down have access fully to what is behind the um footwell usually it's wiring or something but i think it's a really good idea so how am I going to make this in design parameters on how it's supposed to be done? Well, I'm going to use the rest of the uh, Passat door beams because they all have M8 um, drill holes in there. Goes right in there. It's super tough. Not going to fail. Really good. What I'm going to have is I'm going to have an M8 on the bottom of this, bottom of this. In between these holes right here in the center, I'm going to have a, I'm going to drill a hole for an M8 there. That way this thing... Is like that with an M8 so what it is is I could take a gun zip them off fold the thing down that's I mean that's kind of the way I want it and then I'm gonna I'm gonna slice all of this to bring it back and make it a triangulated uh, mount so let me get my stuff back on and warm up the grinder and let's see what I can make <laughs> we got to put a stabilizing bar across here. Um, first thing first, we have to go back into the cabin and see how it actually fits. Here's the footrest. If I'm sitting in the seat like this, right now my feet, the ankles are in a neutral position. So what does that mean? It means it's going to be comfortable over, the, over a couple hundred miles. No problem. What it is, is that I had to put some blocks underneath there to raise it up in order to get that position. Also, um, the top, I think the top will definitely need to be tied in. So I got to find some metal to tie in the top and I got to get some metal to go from the bottom over. Right, right now, the, 
those uh, posts on the uh, mount not going anywhere. They're they're solid against you know the back part of the uh, uh, wheel on uh, back part of the um, footwell. So I think I'm really good right there. All I do is mark it and clean it up so I can weld it. But the main thing is getting a piece of metal underneath here and a piece of metal to tie in these things. I'm not sure if I'm going to uh, uh, go side to side. I, I really don't think so. I don't really think I need it. And right now, let me just uh, go find that metal. We can put it in. It doesn't have to be very much because all I'm doing is just a, just a riser plate. We have all the strength we need right there. Wow, pretty happy with it. And even sparkle, I can see that. <laughs> All right, let me go get that metal and we'll see if I can dig something up and we can put this thing all together. I'm happy. I get to use more Eurovan seat. <laughs> Here's the footrest, still a little bit hot. <clears throat> I took one of the old pieces of tubing that I used for the dashboard to put it across here just for a stable, stabling uh, brace, that's all it is. So the things don't spread apart. This is all set up, let's go take a look at it. What do you think of that? That looks pretty cool. Let's finish up on the seat. Let me show you what I'm doing there. And that way, right after the seat, I gotta put in the harness bars. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do that because there's a certain way you have to do it. Let's, uh, let's run over to the bench again. Here's the seat, and you're probably wondering why I have four vice grips on here. <laughs> well, what happened was when I put this seat in and, and set it down, I was assuming these plates would lay absolutely flat on this crossbar. This one was, this one wasn't. This one had a gap right over here. It's like this, the way the seat was, it kind of, you know, kind of kitty cornered and have like a small gap right there. Could I have welded it? Yeah, but what I did do is I cut the tabs. I made sure this is absolutely completely flat to this metal. That way, after I tack this, I can pull the seat. This is guaranteed not to go anywhere. Then I can start welding everything around and building everything up. That way, nothing moves. And the seat won't get harmed also with the slag. So let me uh, tack this in. I just wanted to show you this because this is what happens when you put it in and you think it's going to be absolutely perfect after you tack it in and it's not. Well, you have to redo it. As long as I have one side that has never been cut, only this side has been cut, I guarantee this side is absolutely flat, you know, because it was, but I just, the vice grips guarantee it. The vice grips guarantee this is flat, then you tack it in, pull the seat, start welding. That's what you got to do. So, all right, let me uh, get the welder started up again so I can tack this in just so it doesn't go anywhere. And then I'll pull the seat. We can finish up the entire frame, you know, with all the supports that go right down through here. And I think we can uh, then, re then pretty much reinstall it and figure out exactly how it's going to work in there. If there's going to be any difference, it's going to be half a centimeter, you know, quarter of an inch, you know, um, that's about max. So it really doesn't come into play just in case something moves but it's really I mean I already put I already figured out saying oh okay this is where it's gonna go this is gonna be good so all right let me um, get this stuff all squared away that way uh, we can get the seat in there we can put the harnesses in there and I'll show you how to do the harnesses because there's a certain way to do it at least it is by the rule book of 2001 <laughs> whether or not it should all be the same but uh, it is what it is all right um, 
All right, let me uh, go grab my helmet and start the welder and we'll just tack this in. Here's what I said we're going to use to do a box section of this frame. Your advanced seat mount. The good thing is I have two holes right here. What does that do? It goes over the nut certs and has the bolt tails coming right through this so I don't have to drill holes. i got to drill holes right there and right here after I'm done. Just so they come through. The real, I mean I could do a, I could cut the bolt off and use a special, you know, just use a small bolt. I'd much rather have a hole right here just in case I lose a bolt and I have to put whatever I have in there. You know, you have to give yourself options. So what all I'm going to do is I'm going to put this right here where it lines up with these two bolts here with these two holes. This is one of the sections that I cut off when I was doing the um, <clears throat> uh, footrest. Put it right there, draw it, grind it out, clean up the metal, weld it in. All right, let me uh, just, uh, <laughs> let me leap into action. <laughs> all right. We have the seats in. We're now at the point to put the harnesses in. We got a couple things that we have to do. Uh, one thing is, is back in the day, sometimes they put harnesses all the way to the back bulkhead and then they came through here. And other times they have, this right here is the main hoop right here and they put them on that. Two, two things, two theories. Everybody was saying you need the shortest amount of distance, you know, from the driver to where the belts are actually taught, actually uh, taught. Um, or tied around just because you don't want the driver going too far forward. I think the reason why other people put them all the way back there, you know those snatch straps that you use to pull out cars and everything? What it is is that, you know, if you're in a really good decelerating crash, <laughs> if, you're tr if it decelerates an awful lot, having that much webbing material, you come forward but it decelerates slower because there's more stretch in the whole thing, then you go backwards. Whether or not that's good or bad, or the, I mean, that's a theory that possibly the reason why they had it back there. Um, I've seen plenty of cars with it back there back in the day, but I have no idea. That's just my two cents, I'm throwing it out there. But what are we gonna use to put the harness bar? Because I'm gonna put it on the main hoop. We're gonna use a couple things. We're gonna use a rule book, string, and a framing square, you know? That's, that'll get our initial assessment. So first thing is, Let's go over there, let's do this, and we will put this harness bar in there and call the episode. Before we 
Before we use the framing square and to figure out where the actual position of the driver is, we have to see about what our rules are. This right here is the SCCA Performance Rally 2001, when I went back with my Cosworth. Now, um, what it is, this tells you where the belt, belts have to be mounted in a safe position, or in the position they consider safe. <clears throat> what it is, is take a look at this. This is where the driver is, and you can only have, here's the driver's back, basically, and you can have it 90 degrees all over, or actually straight back, you know, horizontal, or I mean, yeah, horizontal all the way to the bulkhead. Um, so you have this much leeway. So we have to figure out, what, I'm going to try and do it right in the center of how you're going to be sitting in the seat and where it's going to go. So let's take the string and that framing square and we can determine which one uh, or how or where the, the uh, harness bar is going to be. The seat is in position where it is. Uh, what I got to do, I have a string. I tie the loop around it right here. I'm using this to represent me to give me an idea of where my angle is in relationship to the seat belts. We have this, so we're going to go back and forth to see where we're going to set this up here, set that one up there, and find out where it's going to end up. And then we're going to determine how our harness bar is going to go. There's our maximum allowable distance. What we can do now is seeing how the, the bar would be not flat, basically, is what it is. I mean, it's, it's, it's curved this way. So I can, if I need to, because it can go all the way up to here. Put it in perspective. It can, all the way, it can go all the way up to here. So I have this much room to play. What I want to do is I want to bring this one up so I can make it look equal across the entire plane right there. So that one's at uh, maximum depth down. This one is up to almost there and that way we can put the harness bar in here. Also we need to know we're going to have three inch belts come back. We need it to wrap around here and wrap around here. Just enough. <laughs> I think we're lucking out. <laughs> so there's our hardest bar, and it looks pretty much equal. So I'm just going to cut up some old roll cage tubing, grind the stuff out, tack it in, clean it, weld it. There we go. So let me uh, get that to let me pull the seats back out, and we can get this thing squared away. I want to do one more thing before I end up the episode. Um, I can't weld in those boxes or some other stuff just because it's mainly rust repair and I have to get underneath to pull the uh, back of the insulation out. Just something you have to do. Uh, I want to do one last thing, which is put the seat belt or put the mounts for the seat belts for the side belts in. Not the bottom pieces because that's pretty simple. It's uh, getting the side pieces in so you have the lap belt uh, and basically going to set it up Kind of different. <laughs> Not different, but okay. <laughs> All right.
what do we have to do? I gotta, I'm making uh, the mount for the lap belt. Okay, first thing, what am I going off of? Right here is the original lap belt mount. Well, actually, this is a, uh, how can I put this? A runner for their uh, shoulder belt. But what this is, is that this is a factory mount. You can use that in almost every racing on because it's factory. It's not going anywhere. And usually when you have to put in other lap belt mounts, what it is, you need a two inch, eighth inch washer um, on the back and that's just so it won't pull out. But how are we gonna get this and how are we gonna do this? Well, right here, like I just said, is the original, is a mounting point that we can put a eye hook for our lap belt. We have the same exact thing over there. What I wanna do, is I wanna line up both of them this way. I am going to have my mount right here so I can look straight down and I know I'm going to figure out where exactly I'm going to put the mount as far down as possible but that's where I'm going to put it and let me show you what I'm going to use for a mount. <laughs> it's kind of factory. a lot of work <laughs> ah what did we do we pretty much have the crew compartment fat not welded or tacked in we have the harness bars tacked in and the seat mounts for the driver side tacked in but we didn't I didn't tack anything else in you know because I wanted to keep the welding down while I have the dashboard installed I don't want I want to keep the welding to an absolute bare minimum inside there that's what I want to do so what I have to do is weld up, you know, the false floor and the, and the foot rest and all that stuff. That's going to be later on down the road. That's going to be after I do the um, firewall. That's going to be the next big thing because I was looking at, you know how I install the fuel lines? They, I installed the fuel lines. They went to the left side of the pedal box. Looking at it, I think they might have to go to the right side of the pedal box because of how I'm gonna do the pedal bars. You know, it's, it's one thing. You do one thing, then when this thing comes up, you might have to change another thing, you know? And this is where you, you're gonna to have to be pretty fluid when you um, come to working on these things, working on your car, because when you sit there and you look at it going, well, if I have to do this, okay, change plans. That's the biggest thing, change plans, make it work, you know? And that's the best I can tell you, because I mean, that's looking at everything the way it's going, there's a reason why I'm not really tacking a lot of things in, because if they had to be moved just a little bit here or a little bit there, so be it. I mean, stuff that I want in there, like the harness bars, I want those tacked. Because the thing is, once I weld them, I weld them, and they're not going anywhere, and I don't need to get into the backside of the, uh, into the, under the passenger compartment at all anymore. So I'm pretty happy about that. And how can I put this? Um, that's it. Thanks. Appreciate it. You know, I hope... I hope to see you guys out there doing this stuff. Oh, you're probably wondering, you know, what was I drilling out to get the mounts, you know, the uh, for the harness bars. I mean, not for the for the harnesses, you know, lap belts. This is what this is is the other side sills that came out of the 4000 Quattro that I used to donate or use as a donor for the sport. What you know, the side sills weren't rusted; they're fine. This is the plate that's the that's the lap belt you know which the lap belt um basically you know bolts into what it is is that it's the th same thread pitch as 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 these mounts right here these mounts are for the um lap belts you know the three inch lap belts fia certified or whatever but you know they're the same thread pitch and it goes right in no problem you know like this no, I mean, they're way, and it also does hood pins. They're the same size, either 11 by 125 or 7 16 by 20. Take your, you know, pick your poison. And you're probably wondering, well, how did you get them out without messing up all the threads? So when you do your own cylinder heads, I mean, not the, not the planing or anything like that or the pressure testing, but, you know, when you assemble the cylinder heads and you put guides in whatever, you always end up with extra guides. And this is what this is. This is a valve guide. I think it's for an Audi. What it is, as I put it in my small lathe, I turned it down, and I made a drill guide. What it is, is I have, oops, I have a um, two and a half inch 
uh, hole saw with the drill bit, you know, the, the pilot bit goes right in, doesn't move around, and cuts them right out. So if you have a, a, a battery operated drill and a metal, two and a half inch metal bit, you make this pilot, you can go to a junkyard and pull out as many as you want. They'll give them to you. You know, at least I, I would assume they'd give them to you because who are they going to sell them to? You know? And uh, other than that, and just tell them what you're doing. Tell them you're building a race car and they'll probably give you more shit. Um, but, you know, that's, that's, I'm just trying to give you the hillbilly way of doing it. Um, you can always go out and buy the real stuff. Go right ahead because all it is is they just put big washers and they use nuts in behind them. But this way, you don't have to weld the nut to a plate, then weld the plate to the thing. All you do is weld the plate there and it's already captured, you know? And it's really thick. It's really thick. Other than that, thank you very much. I appreciate it, you know? Hopefully I'll get the brake parts in so we can finish up the firewall and finish up all that and then get this thing on the road. To, well, at least on the, on, on, on the uh, lift so I can figure out, make sure the suspension's okay and, you know, exhaust and skid plates. But other than that, oh boy, long road. So thank you very much. Remember, you can do this. I'm just a hillbilly out here in New Hampshire. <laughs> Nothing special. So thank you very much for showing up. I appreciate it. Have a good one. Bye now.